Mongolia. Those who live there call it the land of the blue sky, but to generations of Westerners, it is a land of the unknown, home to a nomadic people who centuries ago rode out from their vast sweeping grasslands to strike fear into the rest of the world. It was to be the venue for Camel Trophy 97. Mongolia is a vast landlocked country three times the size of France. The route took the competitors from the capital, Ulaanbaatar, up to the border with Siberia and down into the Gobi Desert before returning via Karakorum, a journey of two and a half thousand kilometers. Ulaanbaatar today is a modern capital and home to more than a quarter of the population. The appropriately named Chinggis Khan Hotel is home to the competitors as they prepare for the coming adventure. Each team has to decide what to pack, but amongst all the high-tech equipment, food seems to be the most essential piece of luggage. Do you want to know what we're eating? Some pasta. Chorizo. Muesli. Um, loads of flapjacks. Lots of different types of cheese. Got cookies and ham. We need chocolate pudding. You think so? <laughs> I, I don't fit in. Though the Land Rover Discoveries have a huge amount of space, in addition to food, the competitors have to fit in bikes, kayaks, and enough warm weather clothing for three weeks. Inevitably, there are tough decisions to be made. So why don't you leave some things behind? <laughs> like what? Right now we're going through and seeing where we're going to store our gear. We have a lot of stuff we're taking on the trip, uh, food and, and equipment, and uh, we have to find a place for it all. The cars look big on the outside, and in fact they are, but uh, there's a lot of stuff to go in there. 20 different countries have come together to experience this once-in-a-lifetime adventure, and it's really great to be here. It's a totally unknown country. We don't know anything about it, natural or cultural heritage, and that is what we're here for, to experience it. Preparing for the cold is difficult, so we've brought all the fleas that we have, all the um, isothermic, uh, everything that we have warm, because that's the difficult part. The warm, you just have to not to be careful not to dehydrate. It's a beautiful country. It's strange. It's, the, uh, the landscape is unbelievable. Um, the people are so friendly. It goes beyond expectations. An old Mongolian proverb proclaims that the lucky man comes with the rain. It's certainly true of the start ceremony, conducted by the Mongolian Prime Minister and event organizer Nick Horn. Intended to reflect the ancient culture of the Mongolian people, the ceremony fills the rain-swept Sukhbatar Square in the center of Ulaanbaatar with the sound of trumpets. Their fanfare is the signal for the entry of Mongolian horsemen, the same warriors who centuries before had struck fear into the rest of the world. Echoing these victories, but also as a celebration of the event, each horseman carries the flag of one of the 20 teams in Camel Trophy Mongolia 97. The horsemen being dressed in their traditional Mongolian style. We're honored to have with us this morning the Prime Minister of Mongolia, Mr. Inksarin who I'm going to ask now to say a few words to you all. With my wish for the best luck and best competitive spirit, I hereby officially start Camel Trophy Mongolia 97. The Prime Minister is keen to stay in the driving seat at the close of the ceremony, so once a few preliminary adjustments have been made to the vehicle, Nick Horn offers a few pointers and they are away. Show your appreciation, please, the start of Camel Trophy Mongolia 1997. Yeah, give it away. Yeah, give it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just pull that
The crowds of well-wishers who have been watching the preparations for Camel Trophy 97 with increasing excitement in the preceding weeks finally have the chance to cheer the competitors on their way. They line each side of the road out of Souk Batar Square, pressing forward to shake the hands of the teams. The lead car, driven by the Prime Minister, flies the Mongolian flag from its bonnet. Behind, one by one, the national teams proudly fly their own national flags as they drive slowly through the throng of well-wishers. With 20 team cars and more than a dozen support vehicles, the lead car is already on the road out of Ulaanbaatar, whilst the others still negotiate their way through the crowd. The rain, which has fallen during the opening ceremony, gradually disappears as the teams pick up speed. Their destination, an ancient gathering point for the Mongolian people, a sacred spot whose history is lost in the mists of time, Turtle Rock. Behind the celebrations, each competitor knows how tough conditions will be. The beauty of Mongolia is unforgiving to the unprepared. To survive, the Mongolians have developed skills they still excel in today. They are called the three main games of men, horse racing, wrestling and archery. Once a year, they gather together for the Nadam festival to compete against each other. The competitors are left in no doubt as to the nature of the challenge they are facing. It's amazing. The whole thing. It's, uh, you're here and you're this small. Look around. It's great. The first competition site is Terelch, where final preparations are underway. <laughs> the competitors are in high spirits and do all they can to keep warm as the temperature drops. They are staying in a Gur camp the traditional form of Mongolian dwelling. May I help you? <laughs> Do something. Yes, this is our girl. Want to come in? It's lovely. It's very really good. Warm. It's the orange model, the, the new for to this year. Where are you sleeping? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. I'm busy, so um, uh, bed is not decided. Oh, be careful, there is a stop, okay. Yes. So look upside. Uh, you could uh, just remove the the roof a bit to have uh, more light and uh, uh, and uh, some fresh air. And when it's uh, raining or it's cold, you just uh, uh, check it back again. Uh, I think this is very uh, white. My uh, Japanese uh, room. <laughs> As soon as the teams are inside, they start making themselves comfortable. We're making popcorn. <laughs> pop, 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 popcorn. <laughs> Floor, she's doing the laundry. The sound will be better if you put it up. Okay, watch this. Salt. Salt or sugar? This is no salt. No, What's this? Oh, we ruined it. It's, it's uh, spicy, isn't it? One of the first decisions the teams have to make is who they're going to travel with. <laughs> We're going in a group with Dutch, you gave me a the, uh, Japanese, uh, Romania and Germany. And the UK. I got to join three maps and found all the routes. <laughs> And uh, I think we're leaving tomorrow because um, tired. we're tired and we want to get to sleep and <laughs> so we've got wet kit and we'll dry it and these girls are wet. <laughs> The opening section of the competitor's journey takes them out onto the vast steppes, rolling grasslands which reach to the horizon. On the way, they attract many curious glances from Mongolians unused to such colourful machinery passing by. Luckily for the competitors, many of them know how to read a map. Yes. Ha! 
Machen zum. That's about one. That's about one. Once they've been pointed in the right direction, they can be on their way. It's fantastic. Yes, unusual experience. Um, very good. Look at that. Very steep hills. Yes. Every every discovery can climb up. Yes. If the teams thought it was going to be easy, they soon find out the advantages of traveling in groups. It's too slippy. I can't get enough traction. Um, no, they're too heavy. They've got too much food. <laughs> One, two, pulling. Sorry. I'm sorry. Very dirty. You. No, no. Ah, oh, good, 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 good. I'm sorry. Filthy. I mean, even got me dirty. <laughs> I just got it. What, what will my mum say? <laughs> Look around this countryside. Oh, the countryside we've had this afternoon is a fantastic drive we've had this afternoon off-road. Compared to the tarmac drive we had this morning, and there's no comparison at all. This is the best driving of my life, and it's amazing. You just don't get anything like this in the UK. You just don't find it. This morning was um, frustrating. There's more to Camel Trophy than driving. Mountain biking is just one of the new competitions for 97, and one which the difficult terrain of Mongolia is ideally suited for. The hills and woodland provide a real challenge to even the fittest, and already a few of the competitors are finding the going a little tougher than they'd imagined. No sooner has one competition ended than a new one begins, this time kayaking on the rocky white water streams filled with freezing mountain waters. More exercise for the lungs comes with orienteering, for many of the teams rated the hardest of all the competitions because of the mixture of exercise coupled with concentration. The 20 teams are split into four groups of five, so that whilst one group is competing in the orienteering, another group are back on the bikes. The quick changes between events can be confusing. Sometimes it seems just as easy to walk. Whilst all this is going on, for another five teams, it's time to tackle the driving. As well as being skillful drivers, it requires yet more precise map reading to avoid being caught out chasing shortcuts. The day's competitions end with a group kayaking race down the river. It would be too easy if they started with paddles already in the water, so the first few seconds are a quick race down a pebbled beach. Things don't get any easier once the boats are afloat. Suddenly everyone seems to want to be in the same bit of the river. In such fast-flowing water, keeping with the current is all important. Some resort to dodgem car tactics to make the point that they want to be first. For others, it's a case of just making it to the end. The French team are the eventual winners, but the rest keep fighting. The spirit of Camel Trophy is shown when the other teams come out to cheer the last place team over the line. The table shows Switzerland with an early lead, but no one is in any doubt as to the difficulties they've already encountered. 
we need some time to climatize to get used to this altitude. But I'm sure it will go better at the end of the week. I got no voice from, from shouting. Yeah? Because here you're shouting against the wind. So nobody hears you. And signaling is also difficult because everybody's doing this. And all, everybody has the same shirt, so you don't know which one is your teammate. But before long, it's time to set off once more. There's a total of 2,400 kilometers to cover, and with eight sites to visit in the next 20 days, the competitors know there's no time to waste. They've already crossed so many bridges to get here, one more isn't going to stop them. On the savannah grasslands, they are a source of interest to Mongolian nomads. They camp wherever they can for the night, wrapping up warm against the cold. We have a, a, thermo, a thermometer on the car and it's minus six degrees. Their journey takes them to competition site number two, Salengi Gol, where they are welcomed by the local Mongolian horsemen and children. By now, most of the competitors have learned that Sayan Bator means hello. I'm fine, thank you. It's a lovely morning. I'm so nervous, actually. I'm a guy. I gotta be tough. I gotta say I'm okay. Yeah. Direct feedback. Oh, shit. Here, kayaking presents a different set of problems in the powerful Salengi Gol. <laughs> I want more hot water. <laughs> yes, it is good for morning showers, but this is very cold. <laughs> Teams try and learn from others' mistakes, but for the group orienteering on the island in the middle of the river, they are all in it and on it together. The thick grass is tough to negotiate, but tired legs are no excuse when there are points to be gained and leads to be maintained. He's fun. I love it. I don't know, he forgot his map and uh, the number and the letter in the map is necessary to have. A blue! Super! Just as in the orienteering, fatigue can cause mistakes, so with the driving competition. The technical driving test involves negotiating a difficult course of tight turns and steep slopes whilst avoiding picking up any penalties. Two teams are about to find out that too much haste can lead to costly errors. It's tempting to put your foot down on the accelerator, but not a good idea. Yeah, priority guys, listen in. Nick, they're both okay, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, drive very fast. And uh, left turn, and uh, yeah. see down the hill. See. Are you okay? Okay. Oh, yeah, only running can show him the way. Forewarned should have been forearmed, but taking an even bigger tumble, the Greek team follow the Russians. After competition site two, the overall placings have changed, with the Austrian pair of Stefan Oya and Albrecht Toising taking a narrow lead over the Czech Republic. As well as the overall competition, there are also the individual. In the driving, Richard Beckman and Marie Hansen are in the lead with 66 points. The French pair of Jean-Jacques André and Philippe Rida take the reward of their technical mastery in kayaking with 87 points. In orienteering, the differences in the skills of the teams is once more demonstrated, as the Swedish pair of Beckman and Hansen leave the Czechs and Italians behind. Mountain biking allowed the Austrians to pick up valuable points and help them to establish the lead in the overall points league. Despite all they've been through, many teams elect to make an early start for the next site, 
a decision which lets them drive with the sunset, camping only as dark falls for another night. Though they light a fire to keep warm and to eat their food by, it isn't long before they're into their tents for a good night's sleep. Then it's time to move on. Morning. Oh, shit. Good morning, Marie. <laughs> good morning. Not very nice in the morning, huh? Ricard, <sighs> you are looking lovely this morning. Am I? <laughs> Thank you very much. Ah, nice weather, sunshine, nice landscape. <laughs> Looks perfect. Everybody else has lots of coats on, but you are just... It's normal new weather in Austria, it's not cold here. <laughs> no, it's not so cold. One advantage of setting off earlier than some of the other teams is that there's time to stop at some of the houses they pass. Mongolians use whatever material is available to build their homes. It's a fine house, <laughs> I it's think. Di different to a girl. Yeah, it is. It's really... I would like to have a look as I could. The Mongolians have a long tradition of hospitality, born from their days as nomads, as Anne-Marie discovers. When I saw it outside, I just imagined like that. It's uh, like um, the old houses uh, in northern Sweden for hundred years ago. Imagine to live like this in the uh, winter. It must be freezing, yes. But it's... yeah, I like it. It's soon time to move on, though. With so much distance to cover, the days pass quickly, and knowing there's another early start means that plans have to be made. Yeah. What time are we up tomorrow, then, Stefan? Uh, 5.30. 30. Give him a few more drinks. <laughs> we can sleep a little Ten. bit longer. <laughs> We're leaving at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. What? 8 o'clock. Hey. Yeah, we decided. <laughs> Before they can set off, there are tasks to be completed. Good morning. Good morning. Then it's back to the driving. Time isn't the most important thing. The Land Rover Award involves getting from one point of the map to another, choosing the best available route. That means matching the distance set by Mark Day, the route coordinator. Hey guys. How are you doing? I'm, I'm. Whoa, not bad. The aim of this exercise is basically to match the ideal distance set by event management. A final drive to the competition site, and then it's back onto the bikes for a punishing uphill climb. Mountain biker Rickard Beckman knows just what it means to be involved in Camel Trophy. It's really a hard job, hard work. My goal is always to try to keep up with the first person until the latest half or something like that. It's good fun when you have a chance to win at least. <laughs> I didn't know if this was my thing to run uphill, but it's, it's, it's turned out to be. For others, it's not so much fun. Watch out, I've got speed up. Yeah, it's going well. It's a bit tiring. It's not too bad. Just keep going. This is killing me. I promise you. The locals have gathered to watch what they must think is a strange way to pass the afternoon. It's an uphill struggle. It felt good after about half the track. But in the start there was that American guy Douglas and uh, the Swiss guy, I think. And we have ten minutes to find a certain color. We come back and we go switch drivers. And we have ten minutes to find the next color. Five, four, three, two, one, go! In the back with the American team of Douglas Mays and Christopher Van Nest, the tension is clear as they will their Land Rover discovery on. And later in the day in the kayaking, it's clear that beneath all the smiles, these are teams who are determined to win. Yeah. 
Though the river has wide points, the teams now know that the most important thing is to keep to the current. They fight for the best position. By the time the river has narrowed again towards the end, the French have achieved another first, much to their delight. Upstream, where the water is shallower, others have decided running is quicker. At the end of the competitions is when the teams reflect on how they gained valuable points. We're about 15th at the start, and there's a bit of a pilot, so we scooted around that, it's got it to about 8th, 7th or 8th. And um, the French guys at the front were picking a really good line, there was yeah, a really good canoeist. Oh, they were about 50 yards ahead, so we just, whatever they did, we did. And everyone's just weaving in and out, and uh, every, every we just kept just cutting inside one person, then another. One person got hit in a tree, one person turned. It was, we just kept picking them off and from 7th, 8th, 7th, 8th down to 2nd. It was brilliant, really good. Yeah, we were really happy, but uh, a lot of mistakes, but it works good now. And we had a lot of fun and enjoyed very much here. The big mistake in driving today, um, we got, uh, I think, uh, last or uh, maybe know. 19, and uh, so it's a good result for today. In the overall points, Austria maintains its lead with 410, the Czech Republic follow with 395, whilst France are just two points behind. The Land Rover Award is a uh, ideal distance, which was driven by one of the staff members, and it's our task now to travel the ideal distance to a given point. And we don't know the route that that person took, but we have to take into account the environmental conditions and our own driving capabilities and things like that uh, to achieve the close to the same ideal distance as that person. It does not have to be the shortest distance. Uh, it doesn't have to be the fastest route. It has to be the ideal distance. The Land Rover Award ensures the teams are careful how they drive their discoveries. Left, left. On some of the terrain, it's absolutely essential. What's the name of this, Arbrecht? That? This yeah? area here. It's this called area. Fun. <laughs> no, this Fortune area City. here. What is this area? Fortune City. Fortune City. City. Flat Tire City. Flat Tire City. Yeah. You'll see Flat Tire City. The hardest place for here to not north. What of it takes us? <laughs> Never worry too much. <laughs> Not a big problem for you, Never try too fast. <laughs> <laughs> All the while, there are locals checking on the team's progress. There are few roads now, and those that are marked on the map are little more than farm tracks, potholed from overuse and dusty from lack of rain. The going is slow, and patience is important. Those teams who arrive early enough at the next site get to lend a hand in the making of a traditional gur, a skill the Mongolians have been practicing for thousands of years. Though some of the younger members need a little help. This is the last one, I think, to put in. So you put it there, and then you twist this, twist this a bit to make it tight. And then wrap it. Well, it looks like we have to have this um, not too far up and not too far down. So they are they're trying to balance it right now in the in the middle. So I'll wait just a bit. This one too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's really neat seeing the uh, different cultures. We I haven't had a chance to see this before. And to uh, to come from Ulaanbaatar, from a city where they don't they don't have many of these, and you know in the town, and then to come out here and see uh, it's like the old way of life. You get to see part of the, the original culture, and it's a it's a great experience. And to be taught by the children is you know, something else. This way. We started a new phase here with the with the felt. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There. And there you are. And there is me. 
Christopher. Christopher. Christopher, right. Christopher. Yes. We need to Can you kill it? Very nice. Here you go. It is for you. Yes, for you. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Meanwhile, back on the step, other teams are encountering other communities. The Russian team sampled the local food before continuing on their journey. Conditions can be deceptive, as the French team demonstrate. Yep. There is 20 centimeter of mud, and after is uh, icy, because uh, it's uh, the permafrost it's all the time. They also find a strange shaman totem, an ovu, in the middle of the forest, and leave their own offerings. As they move north, it becomes colder, though it doesn't seem to dampen anyone's spirits. And here you have photographs from each country. And now, Sato from... Hello, Sato, how are you? Matthias is seeking for fresh water. It's not so easy to climb out of this. At the end of the Land Rover Award, it's all about who has got the ideal distance. What have you got? 154.53. Top cool, boys. Top cool. <laughs> Though when it's someone's birthday, they're bound to be the centre of attention. By now, the teams are getting used to their kayaks, but it doesn't make the slalom competition any easier. Each river presents different problems, and as the water gets colder, hands become numb and mistakes are made. Although a few team members have kayaked before, many are attempting serious competition for the first time. The relief of a successful run is clear on their faces. The Italians are gaining in confidence. The current is uh, strong. It's a strong current, and the pulse is near. <laughs> and also, is uh, is uh, easy to make a cup size. Also, <laughs> for those who do manage the course without capsizing, there's the added advantage of being able to compete in the mountain biking without wearing wet clothes. The mountain bikes take almost as much punishment as the competitors, and frequent repairs are made. After a time, it seems to some of the teams, they are in a world of their own, one where the only thing that matters is passing the finishing line. I woke up this morning and all of a sudden I found myself in a kayak on a freezing lake. I don't understand it. Help me out of this dream. Success depends on the two competitors working together as a team. Individual effort has to be allied with that of their teammate, since both sets of points are put together to determine each team's final tally. The results are eagerly awaited. It's, it's a good important. combination. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun yeah. competition and then it works, but if you are, you must win, that's not good. Yeah. 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 Always today, straight uh, today we tried uh, very hard because it was very close and uh, we did a few mistakes in orienteering and now we know we have to relax again and uh, just have fun. The scenery is becoming ever more spectacular. 
and Lake Hovsgol, which contains 2% of the world's freshwater, proves irresistible. During winter, this lake is crossed by lorries heading for the border with Siberia. But now it's thawing in the spring sunshine, it's ideal for kayaking. The continuing success of the Austrian team ensures they remain in first place with a lead of 18 points, followed by the Czech Republic and France. The changing terrain is fun to drive through and tests both the wheel clearance and windscreen wipers of the competitors' vehicles. For much of their day, the vehicles are driving through a barren landscape, with few signs of others passing before them, except ovus, shrines ensuring good luck situated on the top of mountain passes. Others do use these routes though, and on their way to the next competition site, Camel Trophy teams discover an upturned vehicle. <laughs> Yeah. There's one of the truck drivers, seems he's got a damaged foot. Right. Um, but the Italian doctor sorting him out from the team member there, so a uh, little bit of assistance in all departments. After making sure the driver has been looked after, the teams use the winches on their Land Rovers to right the lorry, as explained by UK support driver and ex-1991 Camel Trophy competitor Tim Dre. Now they've probably got three or four days to unload the lorry, sort the load out, get the cells together, the doctor sorted the man out, we've done the, yeah, we've done the bit that they couldn't do, so now we're packing up and we're on our way. The Land Rover vehicles are not only ideal for rescue missions, they cover the terrain quickly and compared to some of the traditional modes of transport, the competitors can count themselves lucky. But they still have to handle the weather and keeping an anxious eye on the heavens to make sure they don't camp during the middle of a rainstorm is all part of ensuring they get enough sleep to do themselves justice in the coming competitions. By now they feel as though they've seen plenty of earth and fire. It must be time for wind. Ah, it's very windy. The weather was bad when we arrived, but now I think it's getting better. Hope tomorrow it's going to be better. And um, I don't know. <laughs> it looks nice. It's very nice, but the weather is very difficult. I don't know how we can do kayak with this weather, and mountain bike is going to be tough. We'll see. <laughs> it's a time for securing belongings so they don't blow away, but it's also a time to relax. How was the trip to the campsite five? It was great. Yeah. Very funny. We had. All kinds of track, very dusty tracks, we had tracks with a lot of mud and tracks with snow and ice. It was great. A lot of water, super. And now I have my urgent beer. <laughs> Cheers. A little bit. If I, uh, in this uh, cold weather, a little bit of alcohol is very good <laughs> for warming me. And it's gonna be okay. I have to bring it over here a bit. Yeah, a little bit. Release is true. And... Underneath their calm exterior, the Austrian team are anxious to maintain their lead and so check their equipment. Others are concentrating on making it through the night. So what's going to be tomorrow? Tomorrow is going to be a good day. It's a great location. Fantastic. It's a bit cold. <laughs> great campsite though. Everyone's just camped on top of each other. It's going to be like body heat between the tents tonight. <laughs> if one person snores, everyone's awake. <laughs> it's a great place, it really is. <laughs> Kayaking on open water is a different skill. The lake catches the wind and makes the going very choppy the following morning. The competitors sometimes aren't sure if all they're doing is getting themselves wet. 
The orienteering takes them to extinct volcanoes in an area of breathtaking beauty. One minute it's sunny, the next they're caught in spring snow. Oh, the weather is quite different. I don't know what the hell are we doing here. <laughs> Kayaking down the gorge, it gets increasingly difficult to spot the teams in the center of the swollen torrent. Mongolia's average elevation above sea level is 1,500 meters, so this river is well nicknamed River in the Sky. From early in the morning until late afternoon, the competitions continue. Though it might be attractive to look at, many find the view from the top a struggle they'd rather not make. I'm dead. I'm dead, mate. There's always the ride back down, though. Going up the hill is my thing, you know? These long legs. Take me up the hill faster maybe than, than uh, some of the others. At this stage, the competitors have become used to pushing themselves to the limit and beyond. The phrases they'd heard repeated at the beginning of Camel Trophy no longer seem quite so abstract. Embrace the unknown. They've heard it so often, but now it's happening to them. They're exploring an unknown continent and an unknown country, but they're also exploring themselves finding out just how hard they can push themselves and how they react when they have nothing left to give other than spirit. As well as the individual competitions and the overall camel trophy, there's the Team Spirit Award to consider, voted for by all the teams. More than this though, there's the pride at doing their best. The effort is there for everyone to see. At the end of White Lake, competition site number five, the Austrians have extended their lead to 45 points and have become the team the others have to chase. Do you know the name of this monastery? Tats Harrell Hub. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> oh, it's mine. <laughs> For years under Russian rule, Buddhism was suppressed. Only in the past few years have temples been allowed to repair themselves and once more attract worshippers. The Dutch team of Aletta van Beek and George Dirksen have heard about the temple and are welcomed by the monks. I'd like to know more about the Buddhism, what would the people, uh, the way they think and the way they, they, where they believe in and whatever. At the moment, you're just impressed about whatever's going on in there. But when you come back home, then you look back and you think, oh, why worry? Why hurry? It's, yeah. But it's a, a totally different life. Everywhere the competitors journey, they find the Mongolian people ready to show them a totally different way of life. Yeah. Piero, do you know how many fish your friend has caught today? Yeah. I think, I think uh, nothing. It's better than Mongolian fish. Fish. Pancha vota. Stasera non mangiamo. This evening we don't eat fish. No, <laughs> This evening only spaghetti. Okay, cha, 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 cha. No. <laughs> the Italian Piero Poli is a trained orthopedic surgeon and was the man responsible for fixing up the driver of the overturned truck. He's looking confident, but. But like his teammates, he found traditional Mongolian fishing a far trickier prospect. We'll give it one more try. Ah. I think uh, I can buy some fish for from us. Yes. No chance. <laughs> the Romanians are keen to prove they can do better. Okay, this is Romania version two. <laughs> Oh, oh. Okay! Move. One cameraman, 80 kilos! Okay, <laughs> Soon it's time for the master to show how it's done. The same. 
No movement is the same. Yes, the effect is very yes. different. <laughs> it took all of 12 seconds. It's all in the wrist, apparently. I can't believe this. Nah. I can't believe this. <laughs> Do I blink or not? Excuse me. Oh, hi, hi, family. Hey, no, hi. Hi. My poor. Hi, me. It's not a plastic one. <laughs> Do you know what kind of fish that is? This is a, a trotter. I think trotter. And show me how big the one that got away was. <laughs> it's like that. Mihai, yeah. we, we just watched you fishing, and yeah. I hear you caught some fish further down the stream. Oh, yeah. Hi. How did they look? I must admit, you, you were a better fisherman than you looked. Absolutely, but it takes two hours of work. No matter how dry some areas of the country are, in the wet, the teams find they often have to help each other out of some difficult situations. They soon learn that the winches on the front of their Land Rover discoveries have a practical purpose. Even so, sometimes it's a case of everyone lending a hand. The Mongolians often seem to drive by every bit of trouble. Map reading is important to avoid trouble, the sort of trouble that costs valuable time to get out of. George, we must follow, I think we must follow the river. I just, I just see in my car, we must follow the yeah. river. And just when the teams think they can make up a little of the delay, a pleasant spring day quickly turns nasty. Snowstorms cut visibility, making navigation by natural features virtually impossible. It doesn't bother the teams too much, though. Their natural high spirits include helping anyone they meet on their way. For hours on end, the teams journey through the Mongolian landscape sometimes peering out through windscreens covered with melting snowflakes, sometimes choosing the best line to take through swollen rivers. They know it's worthwhile, though, not only because of the competition itself, but because of the welcome their competitors and friends give them when they finally arrive at the site. Oh, my God. Get out the oh, way! Yeah. <laughs> 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 A cold night, but warmth comes not only from the fires, but from the company of the people they have been travelling with. Another chill morning. The first challenge to rise earlier than the locals and their animals. At first light, it's hard to believe that this camp will be moving on in only an hour. Everything has its place, and by now everyone knows where to pack their sleeping bags. But before the final move, there's the chance to ride one of the yaks. Yeah, it's quite nice. And improvise on presents. One for my mommy, mother, one for my, one for my memory, one for my friends, and Two for my girlfriends. <laughs> it's a joke! <laughs> riding a yak sometimes looks easier than riding the mountain bikes. Those Mongolian hills don't get any smaller. Alright, guys, come on. Come on, there, guy. Go for it. Once the competitions start, it can be a lonely business, but there's always support out there. Nice job. Tactics come into play with mountain biking. It's a tough decision deciding when to get off the bike and run with it, and when to get back on. There's always the end to look forward to, though it may take a few minutes before you've got the breath to cheer on your teammate.
でああ心臓破りですねあああああああサンキューああファーステッ One place where the weather can be guaranteed hot and sunny is the Gobi Desert. Home to many rare and exotic species, the Gobi has long been used as a shorthand phrase for the unknown. The teams know they are three quarters of the way through their journey, yet they can't afford to relax their efforts. In this flat and barren wasteland, they need to concentrate harder than ever on their route. Relying on their onboard global positioning system and old fashioned map reading skills if they are not to get lost. Is this recording? Goes on the map. Yeah, we yes. come along. We've yes. been following the road the whole way, and, and it doesn't show on the map, but it's here right in the road. There's a fork in the road, but it's not on the map. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you know which way we go? <laughs> no. <laughs> The results of the Land Rover Award are announced when the teams arrive at the competition site, and it's Romania's turn to enjoy being the centre of attention. We're the team from Romania. The team of Cornel Fanel Manu and Miha Mares are off the lead in the overall trophy, but through their efforts in the Land Rover Award, they have proved themselves worthy champions. It's really something. I mean, we are for the first time in the uh, Camel Trophy and winning something. Perfect. The driving competition isn't over though, and in the Gobi, the teams have to make sure they find exact points in the desert, hundreds of yards apart. If they know the answer, they're not letting on. Swerving between flags without touching them isn't easy when you're trying to make time. The competition also makes sure that both team members get a chance to drive. And the competitors have to follow all the rules, such as making sure they have their seatbelts on at all times. After all that dust, it's a relief to go for a quiet paddle. The lake is one of the last remaining bodies of water in the Gobi region and shrinks yearly under the unforgiving sun. Only days before, the competitors had been amongst the snow capped mountains of Hangi Nuru, brushing a fresh fall of snow from their tents in the morning. Now they are amongst the dunes of southern Mongolia, with sand between their toes and a sun which beats down from first light until dusk. Still, with all that virgin sand in front of them, it's too much to resist. Everyone wants to leave at least a couple of footprints before they leave. Nothing remains the same though. For the desert, Camel Trophy will have only been here for a few seconds in its history. As the teams reach the end of their journey round Mongolia, the urge to celebrate becomes stronger. On the way out of the Gobi, it's decided that, for once, they'll all camp together. From that simple idea comes another, but one which is more difficult to organise. Food has been a favourite topic of conversation, each nation proclaiming their own to be the best. There's only one way to find out, an international meal, a feast featuring culinary delights from around the globe, to be eaten in one of its most remote corners. Imported, imported, imported. Germany must be workers, Turkish workers. Oh, 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 and with the food, celebrations. Anwar Zirul of the Moroccan team luckily having packed sufficient clothing to show the rest of the teams how her nation spent evenings with friends. Communal dining in a mood of share and share alike keep the competitors celebrating through into the early hours. The peace of the next morning though is only to be short-lived. Once the competitors arrive at the site, there are the final competitions to complete. Throughout the trophy, the teams have learned to relax when they can, so they can give their most to the strenuous business of collecting points. Work hard and play hard is a favourite saying. To qualify for a place on Camel Trophy, and so represent their nations, they had to prove themselves as something special. Not superhuman, 
but normal people prepared to undertake a challenge and so enjoy the adventure of their lifetimes. On the way, they made many new friends. Not only their teammates, not only their supporters, but those they were competing against. And beyond that, the Mongolians themselves. Embracing the unknown, over 21 days the competitors befriended the environment and people, whilst always maintaining their respect for them. Nothing was easy on Camel Trophy. Though the organisation was there to allow the competitors to take part, beyond that it was up to each individual, and then each team. Together, all 20 made sure they were fighting right up to the wire, eager to gain as many points as possible. In the end, though, they'd been through it all together, and they confirmed friendships in the final kayaking event by helping each other over the line. It was the Austrian pair of Stefan Oyer and Albrecht Toising who took Camel Trophy Mongolia 97. The secret of success? Relaxing, take it easy, no mistakes, good points. Yeah. We won it. <laughs> the trophy was presented to them in front of the ancient capital of Karakorum, scene of so many ancient victories. And from the celebrations, you can tell everyone saw themselves as winners. Oh!